everyone and welcome back to my channel. I this is video has been a long time coming. Uh, I just haven't been motivated to film the last little bit, um, both from like what's happening in the world right now with Ukraine. Uh, just being a third generation Ukrainian, it's a very close to home topic, and I didn't even feel like posting this video like at all right now. But it's been so long since I've posted anything because my motivation levels have been very low lately and I've also been very distracted with trying to figure out what I want to do for my wedding dress and also trying to make this. I have a few small side projects from clients and it's just kind of overwhelming and everything. But yeah, so in this video, it probably took me like, I think I started this project like the first week of January and it's now the end of February, so. It's taken a while to finish. Um, but yeah, so in this video, I'm going to be making uh, a peplum shacket. Here's photo inspo. I shared it in my sewing plans of 2022 video as kind of like a maybe project, but I actually had a few of my close friends in real life reach out to me after that video and they're like, you gotta make this, it's so cute. And that kind of pushed me to be like, yes, I'm gonna make this. And it's so cute, I love it. So yeah, let's hop into this very lengthy video because <laughs> it took a long time to make it actually, um, just like the actual process of it. Um, but yeah, let's hop right into it and yeah, let's make a shacket. <laughs> Even though the world's not doing the greatest, but we can still make clothes as a coping mechanism. Let's get into it. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the cutting table. It's not finished yet, but it's a standing table now. I just have to stain and kind of finish the edges at the top, but we're gonna work on pattern hacking this pattern from Mood Fabric. And yeah, I'm just gonna put you on a little time lapse while we hack this pattern. So basically what I'm gonna do is trace the two pieces that were hacking which is the front and the back and then cutting them out and then modifying them from there cool So now that we have our front and back traced out and cut out, I'm going to measure um, out the bottom chunk that we're gonna make into the peplum. I haven't decided how far down I wanna go. I will have to measure that and get back here. But yeah, so we're gonna basically measure down from the armpit, because these sides should, yeah, they line up, so in length. Which is the good pat which is a good pattern. So we're gonna measure equal amount on both the front and back and just chop it off. And then we'll do some tweaking to the bottom pieces. Okay, I think I determined I wanna do seven inches down roughly, because once we deal with seam allowance and stuff, it'll probably go up a bit. And also like I don't know how deep this is gonna sit in my armpit. So we're gonna go with seven, we can always shorten it. And it's most likely going to be longer. So we're going with seven. Okay, so now for the hacking part of it, I actually don't think I'm gonna make new pieces. I think just what I'm gonna do is just double the length. So basically, like, how do I word this? So like, okay, figured it out. So what I would, 
I'm gonna end up doing is putting the side with the curved bottom that kind of, that would go at the side seam. So this is the side seam, this is the curved bottom. I'm gonna put this against the edge of the fabric and then just measure out double the width. So then I get double the width so I can scrunch it up to give us that peplum look with the top. Does that make sense? And then I'm gonna do that also with the bottom piece. So these are currently the bottom piece for my size is just shy of 13 inches. So I'll make this uh, 25 and a half long. And then for the front piece, it'll be, it's just over 15, so it'll be 30 and a half long. Cool. Let's cut out some fabric. Okay, so now we're gonna detach the backs to the fronts, um, both the top pieces and the bottom peplum piece is. So yeah, I'm just gonna attach all of these now and sew them together. I want to show you that I have a little sewing buddy today in the sewing room. She's just sleeping so peacefully until I got too close. Okay, so now that we have our bottom part of the body and our top part of the body, we now have to uh, gather the top of the bottom piece. So the side that doesn't have the like swoops. So we're gonna put a row with of basting stitch, which is the longest stitch length your machine does. And then we're gonna gather it up and then pin it to the top half.
Okay, so typically you would sew two rows of this basting stitch. I'm lazy and I find it works with one, so I just do one. Um, but you're gonna, didn't leave en enough thread. Oh, it just went. So you're gonna take the top thread and just pull it. And it'll just start gathering. And then on the other end, you knot the ends of the thread together so that it doesn't pull out the stitches completely. So yeah, we're just gonna gather and scrunch. <laughs> and yeah, the whole reason that most people will do too is it does give a more even gather, but I find this works. So that's what we're gonna do. Also one tip I did see um, another sewing YouTuber do, Rosary Apparel, is actually doing the gather stitch just section by section to make it easier, especially when you're doing something, a very long gather stitch like this. It can make it a bit more easy for you. Okay, so now that I've gathered it to about the right length, we're going to pin it on now, right sides together, lining up our side seams, and then just making sure the gathers are uh, even. And also, I'm going to leave, the, let me just take a look at the pattern quick. Yeah, the first, like, is this the, no, nope, that's the back. Yeah, so I'm gonna leave the first, you see this, the first little bit of the front of the bottom layer, just so we have a smooth finish for um, the facing, just because we don't want that part to be um, all gathered. So I'm gonna measure that just to make sure I don't gather, um, yeah, two, the first two inches. Yeah, and then, so to make sure my gathers are even, I'm gonna line up this side seam first, and then we'll work um, kind of throughout the section to make sure it's all pinned evenly. And so for the back, since it's such a long piece, I'm gonna find the center marks and I'll pin that down first. Um, it's kind of hard to find when it's gathered, so I'm going based on the um, bottom edge that's not gathered. And this doesn't have to be exactly perfect, it just helps make sure that it's super even. Okay, now we just stitch it up. Okay, I don't know how well you can see this. Um, let's see if I stand further back, maybe? but I feel like it's too long and I wanna rip off the peplum and re-add it like up here because I think that looks way cuter. 
Do we agree? I think it looks way better when it is up here versus down here. This just makes me look real, like I'm wearing a dad's coat, but this will make it look a little more cute. So yeah, I'm gonna seam rip it and then re-sew it on and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so I figured it'd be easier to show you the jacket on my mannequin as opposed to on me. Um, but yeah, so I shortened up the top bodice and then also, and I added in uh, one inch darts um, to each kind of panel. So one in the front on both sides and then two in the back just to kind of cinch it in a little bit. So if you sew this pattern, just know it is going to be a very baggy jacket. And with the added peplum, it was just like too much jacket for my frame. So yeah, that's what I did now. So I'm gonna start working on the sleeves and yeah, we're gonna keep putting this baby together. Okay, so now I'm going to press open the seams so they're flat and with the little like slap chunk piece, I don't know how to describe it, but you can see how it goes out. We're going to press that flat as well and then we're going to stitch kind of up over and down to make sure those display open. Okay, so now I'm going to take my cuff pieces that all have the interfacing ironed on the wrong side and we're just going to take two at a time and we're going to sew around the two short sides and one of the long sides. So yeah, go do that. Okay, so now we need to sew a gather stitch around the bottom hem of the sleeve. So I'm just gonna do that right now. Okay, so first I'm going to now gather the sleeve that I've sewn a gather stitch on. And then once it's gathered to match the length of my cuff, then we'll just pin it onto one side of the cuff, not both. Um, this way it will just get a cleaner edge. So yeah, we'll do right sides, right sides for the cuff. And you won't need to gather too much. Okay, so I last left off at finishing the cuffs on the sleeves, so now it's time to add the sleeves to the main part of the jacket. And on the pattern, so let me just find it. Yeah, there's like little notches right there in the sleeve. And I'll line that up with the same notch on the sleeve pattern piece so that we don't have like a 
wonky sleeve. Okay, cool. Let's add these sleeves. Okay, so those sleeves were a nightmare to just pin onto the jacket. I think I might have cut out the wrong size of sleeve for the size of body, or my seam allowance was very inconsistent. Uh, but I ended up taking in like half an inch from the seam uh, just to make it fit, and then I still had to do. A gather stitch around the top to kind of ease it in a little bit more um, but yeah I've done that and during that process ran out of thread so I'll be back cuz I can't finish this tonight unless I switch to a different color thread which I don't want to do so yeah that's it for me tonight I will see you in the next clip, which who knows how many days away that'll be. Morning. So I got more thread. So now let's attach these sleeves. Woo. Look at this. Look how good this looks. I'm obsessed. Okay, let's move on to the collar now. Actually, let's work on the pocket now. Uh, just because I feel like once the collar's on, it's going to be a bit harder to do the pocket. Um, so we're going to take our flap pieces and put two wrong sides together and then the other two wrong sides together. And then sew them along kind of these like curvy pointy edge and then we'll flip them oh we'll clip the seams flip them iron them and then we can attach the pocket Okay, so here are my pressed pocket pieces. So you can see they, all the edges are pressed and this top edge is hemmed and ready to go. Same with this one. So now what we're going to do is take our jacket, the front of our jacket. And so I have already pressed kind of my front seam. So we're just gonna put the pockets kind of in the center. And I'm gonna line up uh, so that the point is like right above the peplum. I feel like these pockets are really large. Like I feel like they could be like this big and it would look way better. Yeah, that looks way better. So I'm just gonna actually just fold that down and then leave it as is. Then we have a nice clean edge at the top just from the fold.
And I'm also going to put, uh, line up my flap to be right at the top of the pocket. And then we're gonna stitch that down so that it folds over. Okay, now to the other side. Okay, so now we just top stitch all the way around the pocket except for the kind of open edge and then top stitch down the uh, flap. So let's go do that. Here are the finished pockets. They look pretty cute. And yeah, I think if you weren't doing like the peplum style of this jacket, the regular pockets would be fine, but yeah, they were just way too big. They're going like almost to the collar, which like no one needs a pocket that high. But yeah, I think they look really good. Okay, so now for the collar pieces, um, we're gonna take them, put them right sides together. The underside has some interfacing um, so we're just gonna line them up and sew them together and then I'm gonna leave a small gap about this big um, in the bottom part of it or actually let me double check the instructions before I tell you what to do okay I'm back after checking the instructions so we're just gonna sew from kind of these corner pieces down and then to the center. We're gonna leave this whole side open so that we can kind of like hide all the uh, seams and raw edges. So I'm gonna sew here and then we'll come back and attach it to the jacket. Uh, my brain is too tired to figure this out at the moment so I'm gonna take a break call it a night and do some googling on how to attach collars because I don't this pattern makes no sense to me because like the tutorial online uh, makes it look like the collar goes completely like from one side to one side kind of like a dress shirt how there's like no like real come on focus on me there we go how there's no real like edge or like the edges line up with each other um as opposed to like most jackets have like a double lapel situation going on uh so yeah i'm gonna do more research and come back at this tomorrow We'll see you then. Okay. So I do some of my best thinking not on camera when I can't figure out a problem. So I just went and attached the collar myself uh, off camera. So what I did is I put the right sides to right sides. It doesn't really matter with the collar because both sides are the same. But so I put it against the right side of the neck fabric, sewed it along. Then I flipped it, made sure the seams were going up, and then I took the flat part and bent, like hemmed it, and then top stitched it down. And then with the kind of like little bit of the lapel that was left, I kind of just stitched it down in place um, with a clean edge, just cause I could not figure out, I know I've done it before, but I could not figure out how to get it so that I could sew it 
my machine to be a clean edge without top stitching it, but I still top stitch it just to make it look better. Um, but yeah, so now I'm going to top stitch um, the front um, button spots down. Um, and then we're gonna figure out the hem because I'm stupid and cut out the hem facing per pattern, not thinking that I'm doubling the length of the hem. So we're actually gonna take that piece I cut out um, from like the waist of the peplum earlier to complete that facing. And yeah, so I'm just probably gonna put you on a bit of a time lapse while we figure that out. Okay, so jacket's finished except for the buttons. I just went through and grab it off the floor. Um, top stitched the upper part of the facing down on the bottom of the jacket. And then once I tried it on, I realized the shoulders were too low, making the sleeves also too long. So I just pulled that up too while I was at it. So yeah, now we just are going to add these snaps to the jacket. Uh, I only have seven because we did one test snap. So I'm gonna do five down in the front and then one on each cuff. Yeah. So I'm gonna do that off camera because we have to do it in our very ugly, ugly, ugly laundry room. But yeah, I'm gonna come back with the final jacket here. Let's finish this.
yeah, so that's how I made this jacket. Um, yeah, I don't know much more to say, but yeah, that's it for me today. You've probably sat here for a million hours already watching me, but yeah, I hope you're all doing well, staying safe and praying for this whole war situation to go away. I don't usually talk politics, but it's just so close to my heart and many people close to me. So yeah, I will see you in the next one. Bye.